I started with the pre-DevOps era. Then we spoke about the inception years and the era of chaos. Now, after that long era of chaos came the maturity years, and that's where we stand today. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. So after the era of chaos between 2010 and 15 came the maturity years, right? And talking about maturity in between 2016 to 18, Kubernetes emerged as sort of the gold standard in the world of container orchestration. Uh, because it released a lot of interesting features in 2016 very useful very interesting features it has always been the most reliable uh, container orchestration as well in 2017 was when enterprises started endorsing kubernetes by either migrating to it or by releasing products around it such as uh, for example aws which is the amazon web services and azure which is microsoft's own cloud service announced and released the generally available version of their managed Kubernetes services. That was a big deal. And then GitHub in 2017 moved their infrastructure to Kubernetes as well. 2016 was when Pokemon case study as well came in. And that was uh, interesting because that was the largest infrastructure running on top of Kubernetes on Google Cloud at that point of time. And 2018 was when it really, really matured and uh, sort of uh, another thing that happened between these years were, uh, and which was very, very interesting development was when Kubernetes turned the competitors into friends, right? And that's what, that was the time when uh, Docker became friendly with Kubernetes and that simplified the tooling a lot because now you can actually run Kubernetes with one node uh, right on your desktop or a laptop with one click of a button after you have installed Docker desktop, which is fantastic. Also, Mesos um, has become friendly with Kubernetes where you can run, um, you know, your containers al along with on using Kubernetes on top of Mesos own DC OS, which is their own data center OS. Uh, that's a great development. So Kubernetes has matured as uh, the most preferred container orchestration engine of today. And Kubernetes along with the Docker has become sort of a de facto standard for running your applications today and in future. Uh, Ansible has uh, sort of become a preferred version or a tool for a configuration management system as well. So there have been a lot of changes in the configuration management system world as well, because earlier these tools were used for everything, right? From infrastructure uh, configurations, uh, to network configurations, to even the application configurations, databases, and everything, installing and configuring almost everything was done through these systems. But in today's world, now that Docker has become uh, prominent along with Kubernetes, the application configurations are completely gone away. So whatever you want to install and configure in terms of application databases and uh, connecting them together, you don't need a configuration management system anymore uh, because it is done by the containers itself. You have container images which are pre-built, pre-baked with all the configurations in there and you can provide rest of the configurations through let's say at the runtime and so on. So what you're left with now is just uh, the configuration of your underlying systems, maybe installing Kubernetes itself, doing network configurations, the system configurations and patching and so on and so forth, compliance tools and so on. And for that Ansible is a great tool and it's also a simple tool uh, which works really great and serves or fills in the rest of the gap uh, when you start using container orchestration engines. Uh, another interesting development in the world of Ansible was uh, when Red Hat in 2015 acquired Ansible. So there's a great push for Ansible as a product as well. Jenkins has always been sort of the boss in the world of continuous integration and uh, however it has not been stagnant as in uh, there have been very interesting developments in the world of Jenkins over the last few years as well and uh, let's talk about what we have as the current state of DevOps where I clearly see now it's a world of standardization and maturity where you can quick you know quickly start looking at the practices and uh, start you know coming up with your tooling system as well which is not you know very difficult in today's world now we have come a 
a long way from talking about 10 plus deploys a day and we are now talking about thousands and deploys a day uh, with a very high reliability as well now this is not for every organization but it is definitely possible to achieve today because of the underlying devops practices and philosophies that the organizations are using right uh, reliability here is also very important because it's not just about moving faster which is definitely important from a product point of view but it is also important to make sure that when you release the product out it is reliable enough that it works that it scales and that it is secure right so if you look at the factors which lead to reliability are availability scalability and security now how do you move fast at the same time you, uh, not compromising reliability is where the five pillars of devops come into play that's what my opinion is and these are the five players that i would like to talk about the cloud containers infrastructure as a code cicd and observability and these are also the five practices that you would definitely want to get started with if you want to start exploring the world of devops let's talk about briefly and quickly about each of these talking about the state of cloud today we have three prominent players in the world of cloud and then there are a lot of factors which go in to decide which one to choose uh, i started with aws back in 2007 and that has always been my favorite however microsoft azure has uh, made uh, you know a lot of progress in the recent years there are a lot of takers of microsoft azure i have seen some uh, devops services from azure which were really really impressive as well and then we always have google cloud which is uh, pro which has been interesting as well and uh, most of them offer similar services some of them have certain specific services which are better than others and so on and so forth so there are a lot of factors which go into when you decide which cloud you want to choose based on what infrastructure you're looking at um, the resources that you have and the, their comfort levels with their cloud as well as the costing and uh, so on and so forth so i don't have a preference over either of that if it comes to the cloud uh, CICD wise, um, as I mentioned, Jenkins has been really interesting. And if you want to get started with uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery, Jenkins is something that you should definitely start looking at. And then if you feel the need for a specific tool which serves a specific purpose, you could possibly go with that as well. But always consider Jenkins as your starting point. That's what my advice to you is. And uh, what has changed in Jenkins when the new features in Jenkins are earlier, if you wanted to migrate the jobs from one Jenkins server to another, was quite a task. Now it has become simplified with the introduction to pipeline as a code. Now with Jenkins today, you can write or define the pipeline, just like writing infrastructure as a code with Ansible is. Um, you can write then you know the complete pipeline with all your jobs using code and store it as a Jenkins file and that helps you not only to migrate but also recreate the jobs very quickly for different branches and so on so that workflow has simplified a lot with the introduction to pipeline as a code now Jenkins also integrates with almost everything and the latest tools being the docker and kubernetes and you can leverage even if you don't want to use docker in your production environment you could still leverage docker in your continuous integration environment and use it to create clean and disposable environments consistently to run your jobs so that's an interesting development which you definitely want to look at along with jenkins comes the tool called a spinnaker which can extend the features of uh, using the pipeline and setting those up uh, from continuous integration and testing to a production deployment with spinnaker you could deploy your products on multiple clouds in multiple regions it's a hybrid cloud deployment tool and not only that you can define the flow of your releases and each of that step can be automated and can be put in a pipeline including any manual inputs that you require and that's the strength of spinnaker so spinnaker does not replace jenkins but rather it extends the functionality of jenkins and extend it to the continuous deployment automated deployment world and i'm going to continue talking about the rest of the three pillars of devops including the infrastructure as a code containers and observability 
in the next lesson.